Hi, Year 12s. Um, here we are, Remote Learning 2.0. Um, I don't think any of us wanted to be in the situation, but here we are, and we're going to make the most of it. Um, pretty hilarious story behind these little pictures, actually. Um, a friend of mine a few months ago was showing me their Bitmojis, um, and seeing as I like to live about 10 years in the past, I decided to make my own Bitmojis and took a selfie, as, I don't know, I think that's what you do, took a selfie, and it just automatically turned me into a male pirate. So I decided to go with that. Um, and here's my inspirational messages for you for remote learning 2.0. Um, generally, how I will structure our lessons over the coming weeks is I will make a narrated video like this one um, and then do um, a Google quiz that just relates to the questions in that. Um, so in terms of marking your attendance, I'll be doing that based on um, the Google quiz that you submit. If you're struggling to get it all done in time, usually um, I think I tend to time them pretty well, but if not, please let me know if you're finding it too much work. Um, just submit what you've done or shoot me an email and say I'm working on it. You know, I'll submit it a little bit late, but please make sure you get it in that same day or you'll be marked as not attended. Um, also keep in mind that, um, you know, you should be using these videos to complete your summary notes, um, but also you should be, using your textbook. Um, I will tell you kind of which pages what we're doing relates to. Um, and also you have your Ed Rollo videos um, and questions as well. Um, the one thing I have found with Ed Rollo is there's often a lot of um, additional information in there. Um, so kind of what I would teach in these videos is, is the absolute what you need to know. Um, so definitely make sure you're watching these. Also, I'm not sure if Ed Rollo has been updated to reflect the changes to the study design, um, but obviously the videos I make will only be the new study design. Um, so the, the topic we're looking at um, now over the next few weeks is um, human evolution. Um, so there's a few kind of things in the, in the dot points there. Um, one is looking at characteristics um, of primates, hominoids, and hominins. So we're going to look at that today, so don't worry if that doesn't sound familiar. Um, and then we'll start looking at the trends in hominin evolution and the human fossil record. So that will take us um, through to the next couple of weeks. Um, also, maybe just pencil in now. The SAC will be week six on the Friday at this point. We're still waiting for information from VCAR in regards to how SACs will be run, but if they're going to be um, online, which we assume they will be, um, that's when it will be. Right, so we'll get started with the characteristics of primates, hominoids, and hominins. Um, and this is um, section 14a in your textbook. It's pages 526 to 530. If you would like to pause now and just quickly have a read through those pages, um, you're more than welcome to, or of course, at any time, just pause this um, and cross-reference with your textbook. All right, just going to start with a little recap from year 11. Um, you will not, you're not going to get questions on this exact slide in um, the exam or in your SACs, um, but it is just important terminology just to remember how we classify um, animals. So when we look at classifying different species, um, at the very, very top level, we have um, domains, which is basically whether they are um, eukaryotes or prokaryotes or archaea. Um, then we go, for, we go down into kingdoms. Um, we have phyla or phylum. We have classes of animals. Um, then we have orders, superfamilies, families, genus and species. So um, for example, um, a class would be mammals. Okay, so what we're looking at with human evolution, we're basically just looking from this point down um, and we really tend to focus on um, kind of this section here, how we classify different species in those areas. So the order that we're concerned with in this topic are primates, okay? Primates include lemurs, um, which you may remember from Madagascar, um, New World monkeys, 
old world monkeys. Um, these are just to do with the, the area of the world that they're from. So old world monkeys are monkeys in Asia and Africa. New world monkeys are found in South America. Um, we also have gibbons, great apes, and humans. They all fall under the classification of primates. And the first part of the dot point is characteristics that are shared by all primate species. So all of these different types of primates all have um, certain things in common. They are um, five digits on both the hand and the feet um, with prehensile grip. So basically prehensile grip is being able to um, grip onto something and hold it. In humans, you probably notice that that just occurs in the hands because we have thumbs. Um, some other primates will have the same thing on their feet so they can um, hold on to branches. Um, we also have flat um, fingernails and toenails and sensitive fingertips. Okay, so all of these things to do with hands are um, shared characteristics of all primates. And you can see here different pictures there. It might look a little bit different, but they all have those general features. Moving towards the head now, all primates have eyes that face forward. Um, and that gives us um, 3D coloured vision. So not all animals have 3D vision, not all animals have coloured vision, but all primates have those things. Um, we all have this protective bone um, on the edge of our eye socket. And if you actually just feel around your eye now, you could probably feel that ridge trace it the whole way around your eye. Um, all primates have that. And we also all have a, um, a large brain in comparison to the size of our bodies. Um, and you'll see as we move into this that um, humans have the largest brain um, relative to bodies, but even other um, primate species, you know, compared to things like sheep or rats um, or most other animals have quite small brains, we have big brains relative to our bodies. Um, and you can see here as well all those forward facing eyes. Um, all primates have flexible spines um, and are able to rotate in our shoulders and our hips. And this is really important um, for movement. Um, you can see there, this first one here is um, a gorilla. And then we've got a human there. Um, but you can see there is kind of some movement through the spine. Um, and we've also got those rotating um, shoulders and hips. Um, a relatively long gestation period. Um, if you're not sure what that is, gestation is pregnancy. Okay, so we have quite a long pregnancy period in humans, it's about 40 weeks. Um, all primates have sexual dimorphism. If you look at this word, morph is just um, changes or difference, and di means two. What this means is that males and females um, look quite different from the outside. So relating to things like um, their reproductive organs, also things like breast tissue. Um, males and females can be usually quite easily identified. Um, and the last really important characteristic of all primates is that we live in social groups. Um, when we look at human evolution, you'll see that we um, live in social groups to a greater extent, but all primates do live um, socially in groups. So just make sure you've got um, some notes written down on those, and then if you jump into the Google quiz and answer question one that relates to this section. Okay, as I said, primates include lots of different groups. Um, we are concerned with the ones on the left side here. So even though the, the larger order of primates includes lemurs um, and both the old and new world monkeys, we don't really care about them now. <laughs> They're nothing to do with what we're going to focus on. So we're gonna look really at this bit from here, from the super family of hominoids downwards, okay? Um, there is a question in the quiz that relates to this picture, but we'll go through the next slide and then you can answer the two of those together. So to classify humans, we start up at the top order of primates, which as we said, includes all of these other things. Um, then we get rid of monkeys and lemurs, the super family of hominoids. Oid just kind of means like, um, and homin, relates to human. So these are human-like um, species. So this includes the gibbons, the great apes, 
and then um, human ancestors. So here we're talking about extinct human species um, as well as the modern humans, which is us. Okay, so they are all hominoids. If we get more specific then into families, we get rid of the gibbons and now we look at the um, hominid family. These words are quite similar, so you will need to practice these a bit. Hominids include the great apes, so things like chimpanzees, this adorable little fella up here, um, gorillas, orangutans, they all are great apes, um, our extinct human ancestors and modern humans. They are all hominids. Getting more specific now, hominins, um, we get rid of the great apes and here we're just looking at our human ancestors, so extinct humans and modern humans. Okay, so um, we'll look at a few examples of different types of human ancestors, um, but you can see these pictures on the left are kind of recreations of what these early human species would have looked like. And then if we get most specific down to um, our species, um, Homo sapiens, the modern humans, um, obviously, you know, would have looked probably quite different um, for many thousands, hundreds of thousands of years before becoming um, the perfect human, uh, which is Nat 5, obviously. So if you just pause this here and go in and answer questions two and three. All right, so we've looked at the features of primates. So things like um, eyes that face forward, um, having a relatively large um, brain, um, having rotating shoulders and hips, um, those kind of features. Now there's features specific just to hominoids and then to hominins. So obviously the other things apply, they're still primates, so they still have eyes facing forward, rotating shoulders, all of those things, um, but a few new characteristics. So hominoids, which remember includes our gibbons and our great apes, have a broad rib cage and pelvis. Um, and we'll look at the next lesson why that is, but it's to do with the way that we move around. Um, we don't tend to be as tree dwelling as um, other primates like monkeys. Um, so a broader rib cage and pelvis. Um, no tail. So even the great apes, um, even though they might look kind of more monkey-like, um, they do not have a tail. Okay, so um, chimpanzees, orangutans, gorillas and humans, um, as well as gibbons, no tail. We all have quite long arms relative to our legs. Um, so for all of the great apes, their arms are actually longer than their legs. Um, for humans, they're not longer, but they are long. They're, they're generally not that much shorter than our legs, which is quite different to other primates. Um, and finally, we've got an even larger um, cranium or skull to house our extremely large and intelligent brains. Um, so hominoids do have a larger skull than the other primates. Um, you can see in this picture here, um, this gorilla, you know, shows a few of those features. It's got um, the, you know, really broad, um, uh, broad rib cage there. Um, you, there's no tail um, and there's really long arms as well relative to the legs um, and his big old buff head there. So large cranium. Uh, we'll look more at skeletons um, in the next lesson, um, but it's good to kind of start getting familiar with them now. Now, if we look further at hominins, so just looking at our humans, both extinct and extant, still living. Hominins are bipedal. That means we walk upright on two legs. This is a really key feature of humans um, and our human ancestors, that we walk on two legs. Some of the great apes can do that for a short period of time, but they tend to walk on all fours, like the gorilla there. Um, hominins have more complex communication. Um, and obviously now that is um, primarily verbal, um, but even early hominins had ways of communicating. Um, and as a result of that, were able to form much more complex social groups. So all primates live in groups, but because of our ability to communicate, hominins have a more complex um, social group with social order within them, okay? 
um, and that's a good example there of the bipedalism um, and like I said in the next lesson we'll look more at the features of our skeleton that allow us to be upright and walking. So just jump in to the quiz and answer questions four and five. Okay so now that we've looked at the features of primates, hominoids and hominins we're just going to briefly introduce um, the timeline of human evolution um, which we'll go into in more detail over the next few lessons. It's worth noting here um, there are a lot of different um, versions or interpretations of this um, and hopefully you're starting to think well a lot of our understanding of human evolution comes from fossils and from um, more recently being able to um, analyze and interpret the DNA that is in current humans and that we've been able to get out of really well preserved fossils. So every time new fossils are discovered new information comes up and things get adjusted. Okay so what we know now is not the end of the story. We don't know everything about human evolution. Um, and if you follow the news, every year there's new developments in this where, you know, they find a new fossil in an area where we've never found one before. And then looking at the DNA, we can place that particular species in this timeline. Okay, but in terms of what you'll be assessed by VCA or what you need to know, um, we'll go through now. But you could, they could very easily use an example of a new case that comes up between now and the exam. Um, so you'll have to apply your understanding. So humans share a common ape ancestor with chimpanzees. This is a really important note. Um, a lot of people say we evolved from chimpanzees, which is not technically correct. Because if you look at this picture down here, if this was our last common ancestor, this wasn't a human, it wasn't a chimpanzee yet either. It was an ape and some changes happened that, well, a lot of changes happened that resulted in humans evolving on one side um, and then other different changes happened and things like chimpanzees um, and bonobos developed on the other side. So it's an example of um, speciation where changes happened and different species emerged from that. Um, a, a really common question and it's a great question is people say well you know if humans are kind of the dominant species um, as we like to think we are why are there still chimpanzees or why are there still other apes why did they not die out? Um, we serve a very different purpose so for some of the very early human ancestors the environment they were in was favorable. So the selection pressures in that environment were good and helped humans who could stand on two legs um, and have big brains and communicate with each other thrive in that environment. In other environments, um, the phenotypes of chimpanzees where they could get up trees and they had much bigger teeth and they were much stronger, that was an advantage in those environments. Okay, so. Um, we both evolved to suit our particular particular environments um, and are both um, a necessary species that have survived natural selection. Okay, these hominins you need to know um, and you need to know the order that they arrived. There's probably going to be some new words in here and you might go, Ugh. we'll say them so much over the coming weeks um, that you'll get used to them. I think a key thing to note here, because you're online and you're probably not, you know, we're not doing that stuff in class where you explain things to each other, practice saying these words out loud. You might sound like an idiot, but who cares? You'll pass. Um, explain it to your parents, explain it to your siblings, Zoom with your mates and practice saying these words because it will help it stick. Um, like I said, we'll go through these more um, in the next lesson, but we're just introducing it for now. So our first known, so of the fossils that we've got, our first known human ancestor was a species called Australopithecus afarensis, okay, um, better known as Lucy you may have heard of. So Lucy was the first, that's the name they gave to the first fossil they found of this species Australopithecus afarensis, which 
shared so many characteristics with humans that it was considered our first known human ancestor. There are a lot more homonyms than I'm going to show in this, but these are the ones that you need to know, the ones that come up really often. Um, a million or so years later, Homo habilis arrived on the scene. So you'll notice now the genus Homo, this is considered the first um, human species. Australopithecus we call a human ancestor, it's not technically part of the um, genus Homo. Um, Homo habilis is important, it was the first animal that we know of that was crafting tools. Um, so these would have been very, very basic, um, just sharpening rocks basically to use as tools for things like um, building things or killing animals. Then a bit of time later, Homo erectus arrived. Um, as you may notice from the name, Homo erectus was the first um, discovered fossil that walked on two legs, that was bipedal. And so that's why it got that name. Since then, actually, we've discovered that all the way back to Australopithecus, um, there was bipedalism happening, but the name had already been created. So Homo erectus was um, a human species, an ancient human species. It achieved a lot of things. It was the first hominin to leave Africa, um, which is where Australopithecus first um, evolved. So the very first human species evolved um, in Africa. So it was the first one to leave Africa, first one to control the use of fire, um, which is actually an enormous achievement that um, has developed the human species. Um, they started creating more sophisticated tools. Um, so, you know, actually um, creating certain shapes or maybe um, uh, spears and things like that. And also the first ones to begin communicating with sounds. Um, so this would be a very, very early um, kind of caveman style speech um, happened in Homo erectus. Then you'll notice um, here, I haven't got the, these three species coming from Homo erectus, but more actually evolving separately from Homo habilis. Um, when we look at the next couple of slides, that will make a, a bit more sense. Um, but most of the evidence now suggests that um, we diverged um, not directly from Homo erectus. Um, I've put these three together, um, Homo neanderthalensis, um, more commonly known as Neanderthals, Homo denisovans, which is a very recently um, discovered genus of um, humans, um, that is in the study design now. Um, we'll come back to that in a week or so. Um, and Homo sapiens, which is us, the modern day human. The reason all three of these um, kind of show up together here is that all three coexisted at the same time. We were all alive on Earth at the same time. Um, we evolved um, different traits and um, as you'll probably notice that modern humans are the only ones left. Um, the evidence suggests that we possibly killed these other species, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of years ago. Um, but they did all evolve in terms of evolution at quite similar times. Um, the evidence we have of, of Homo neanderthalus is that they lived in Eurasia. So that's... Um, Europe and Northern Asia, places like Russia, Siberia. Um, Homo Denisovans was more in Asia, so further south. Um, and there are a lot of other examples of um, hominin species that lived in, in different areas, like in Polynesia. Um, and Homo sapiens, which as we know, um, eventually kind of moved to all parts of the world. Again, we'll come back to that. What I want you to make, do, make sure is that you've got these kind of key notes written down, um, maybe even make a little bit of an acronym um, to help you remember. So Australopithecus afarensis, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and then you could have Neanderthalensis, Denisovans and Sapiens kind of all in one group. But this is the order that they evolved in. Even though we didn't directly evolve from Homo erectus, we came after them. Okay, so this is the order. There have been a lot of questions in past exams where it will show you a couple of skulls 
um, and ask you which one would have evolved first. So you need to know this. Um, but again, we'll look at those features um, in the next few lessons. So just go in and answer question six. Um, this is one example of a, a phylogenetic tree. Um, as I said, there's so many different versions of this. If you Googled, um, you know, a human evolutionary tree, you're going to find heaps and heaps of different examples. Um, but we start down the bottom here, so around 3 million years ago. Um, more recent evidence actually tells us it's closer to 4 million years ago. Um, but we had Australopithecus afarensis. Remember when you've got a node here and it goes in two different directions, that's kind of a speciation event. So one group started speciating into these other types of australopithecines um, and these ones died out you can see so around 1.8 million years ago australopithecus boise which is my favorite name um, we have got no evidence of it since then so we assume it became extinct australopithecus robustus um, around 1.5 million years ago we've got no evidence after that point um, then along this other tree these are what became um, our hominins, our humans over time. So Homo habilis, Homo erectus, um, and then we've got Neanderthalensis and sapiens. So you'll see in this diagram, it looks like um, Neanderthals and sapiens did evolve directly from erectus. Um, but more recent evidence suggests that that's not quite how it happened. Here is a past exam question where it clearly shows two different models. Um, and part of the study design for this um, area of study is that you understand the reasons that different scientists or different paleoanthropologists, they're really fun people to have at parties, um, why they may come up with different models um, based on the different evidence that they have. Um, so we've got model one up here where we go from Australopithecus Again, some other Australopithecine species here. Um, then it has that Homo habilis, Homo ergasta, and Homo erectus all speciated um, from a different ancestor around 3 million years ago. Uh, from the same ancestor, but came different. Um, from ergasta here, we had Homo heidelbergensis. You don't need to remember these names, except the ones I showed you before, but you will see them. I can guarantee that these names will come up in your exam in a question such as this. So, you know, having seen it before will mean you're less likely to freak out when you see it. Um, and then we had Neanderthals and sapiens um, diverging from that species. In model two, they um, suggested it was a, a more straightforward um, evolutionary timeline until it got to um, this kind of more recent thing where Homo erectus went in one direction um, and then we had sapiens and Neanderthals down here. Okay, so like I said, you need to know the order that they first kind of came up. But if you're being asked what evolved from what, you'll be given some kind of information like this. Um, so the final question I want you to do for this lesson, jump into question seven, um, have a go at answering that. Um, and also please um, feel free to pop some feedback um, at the bottom there. I'm not going to be annoyed if you give negative feedback. Um, it's really important that we do this well over the next few weeks um, or for the rest of this term. Um, so let me know what's worked, what didn't, um, and if you've got any questions that I can address um, in the next lesson. All right, thank you. Have a good day.